Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We have been working on this Chicago Coin Gunsmoke pinball machine and it is super cool. We had one of these a while back that we owned and fixed up and sold and a, a customer saw that, uh, well, a viewer saw that, uh, that video and brought us theirs so that we could fix it up for them. So that's what this is. This is a customer's and we're going to... Uh, get it up and running. Now we already did one video of it kind of showing the condition that it was in whenever we got it in. Basically they just want us to work through it uh, and get the thing playing well. So that's what we're going to do and today we're going to start with that. We plugged it in in the last video just to show you kind of the condition that they pop up in. A lot of times, and not in this customer's case, but in a lot of cases people will tell us um, you know, they're trying to figure out what's going on with it, and they'll say, well, it pretty much works, but it's not, you know, it's just got this little thing going on. And so we wanted to show you that this is the kind of shape that they show up in a lot of times. You see the thing is up and running, and the flippers are even working. It's stuck inside of a game. If I had a ball in there, we could, we could shoot it. I don't think it's scoring, though. You're just getting a little bit of stuff going on. We started the gun smoke thing but we can't stop it. Um, look, press gun smoke button on front of cabinet for highest score. So we got, you know, it's it's kind of working, doing a little bit of its stuff. Um, but basically we need to go through the entire thing. So the first thing we're gonna do is work down in the bottom of the cabinet. I'm gonna remove this play field so we can look down in there and we're gonna work through it step by step, show you how to fix yours. So we've unplugged the game. Lifted the play field up out of it, unplugged the Jones plugs, which were plugged in right back in. And we're down inside. There's not a ton of stuff in it. I see a wing nut laying back there. There's a rebound rubber that goes on the play field. There's a kind of flex stone that they were using to clean uh, some of the uh, contacts. Um, and that's about it. It's a random screw from somewhere, so it's all pretty clean. This particular one has had a uh, on-off switch added to the cabinet. That's it there. They, at one point, it, it looks like they had it maybe on the front. <laughs> but then they moved it down below. Um, but everything looks pretty clean. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, just because it will look better in the video, I'm going to take this board loose and set it up on top of the cabinet. It usually doesn't bother me to work on the stuff down in the cabinet, but if I get it up out of there, you can see it a little better. Uh, there are some big screws here. If you take these loose, that whole platform can lift up out of there. Uh, I have to worry about this start wire that they added. Make sure that doesn't get caught. And I have to unplug this. Have to worry about um, that. I gotta make sure I got enough length on the wire here. But I think we should be able to finagle it where I can get that up out of there and up on the top so we can get a closer look at it. And then I'll clean. I'll vacuum all under it, get the cabinet clean too, and then we'll start working through all of the relays. So we got it all vacuumed out. I've got a little brush thing on my vacuum that lets you kind of brush it while you go and it just knocks all the dust off, makes it real quick. Cleaned it all up. Boy, it's looking great inside of it in that part that'll be covered up for eternity and we'll never see again. But hey, at least you and I know that it's clean. All right, and then uh, I popped up this thing. These are harder to clean just because the stuff's all in the way. Now, if you want to go all the way, you could take all of this stuff off of this board, clean the board, paint the board, do whatever you want, and then put it all back. I've even heard of people taking all of this stuff, because it's all hooked together, right? You could unscrew all of this stuff, and then put it in your dishwasher, let the dishwasher clean it all up, let it all dry, and then dry some more, and then dry some more, 
and then put it out in your driveway to make sure it dries some more and then put it back and you probably have a really clean shiny pinball machine. Now we charge people to work on these and I can tell you for a fact after talking to this guy he don't want to pay me hundreds and hundreds of dollars to make that board look a little cleaner so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> right? We're just cleaning it up we're going to get the thing working great and uh, make it real reliable and everything but if you were doing it as a hobby or you're working on your own machine that might be something you want to think about because you could get that looking real nice and brand new and restored. We don't like using the word restored because I don't feel like that we're restoring them. We're repairing them. We're renovating them. We're rehab rehabilitating them. We are refurbishing them, but we are certainly not restoring them. Okay, uh, so the, what we're going to do is we're basically, we have to clean every switch in the game. And you might say, well, why in the world would you do that? It's because we don't know which switches are messed up. Is this switch too dirty to, for electricity to run through it? You have no clue. You have no clue. So we need to look at all of them anyway. We might as well clean them while we're doing it. Um, so what we do is we go through and systematically, and again, the power's off, we systematically clean every switch in the game. And if you do that, and they're all adjusted right, the game will work, unless there's a failed coil or something. Right? Um, now when you go through, you don't want to adjust every switch in the game. You want to clean them all, but you don't want to adjust all of them. Because these things get kind of a timing to them. So certain switches, they, you know, they might be a little bit too close together. So when the relay pulls in, it pushes a little quicker than maybe it should. But then the, on the, one of the other relays, maybe the switch is a little bit too far apart. And so because that one's too short and that one's too far apart, it actually, they correct each other. They have like a timing to them, and they kind of work it out itself. Leave them alone. If you go through and try to get every switch perfectly adjusted, where it's exactly the same uh, distance apart on every switch, you will screw something up bigger than hell, and then you'll spend hours trying to figure out what you messed up. So don't adjust them unless unless you just know that the thing needs adjusted. Okay. So we'll look at this. Will be a good one here to look at. Oh, let me show you what we clean them with. Now this person had a like a flex stone in it. So this is like almost like paper. Kind of like thin cardboard. And it's abrasive. So the purpose of this is this switch here. See how it's all black looking? Well, is electricity running through that? I mean, it's got all that soot and everything all over it and dirt. So the purpose of it is you want to clean that up. I'm doing it with one hand, but okay. so now that same switch, I can't see it that good. Yeah. That same switch is clean, at least on the flattest part, where it touches the other switch. And you can go all through it and try to get the entire thing clean. But one of them will be rounded and the other one will be flat. The contacts. So you don't need the whole rounded part to be clean. You just need the, the part that touches the other contact to be clean. Right, so you just want that to be nice and shiny again so that whenever they touch, they make a good mate and electricity will flow between the two contacts. And that's literally what the problem is with this game. There's, a, there's bad connections all through it where the power is not getting from one contact to another, from one connection to another. There's a joint where everything's screwed up. And there's likely 40 different ones in this game right now. Well, if we go through and clean every switch, we will probably eliminate 38 of those and get it pretty much working. And then we can use the schematics to track down the other ones. But if we try to get the schematics to track down the problem now, even if we could track it down, since everything's dirty, as soon as you play it a little while, you'll end up with more problems that pop up because now this one's acting up or whatever. So we just go through, we clean every freaking switch in it. But again, make sure you don't adjust every switch because it's easy to adjust them out. If you see one that obviously needs adjusted though, go ahead. Okay, so if you look at this one, 
This is, look, notice there are two blades that touch. That is a switch set. That is a switch set. You'll see things like these little pieces of paper. The purpose of that is to keep this switch from touching this switch on the other set. If that happened, maybe that would short some stuff out. So they may have 120 running through this one or something. Right? So that is a switch set. That is a switch set. That is a switch set. That is a switch set, and that is a switch set. So you have all these different little sets of switches. So when the relay pulls in, and who knows what this relay even is, but when it pulls in, you see this first set of switches, when the relay pulls in, it opens. This one. We're just talking about these two right here. Okay, see it opens. And then when it goes back out, it closes again. Now if you look at the, the shorter of the two blades, see how it's moving just barely? It's just barely moving. That's because the longer blade is pushing through it. That's how you want it. Now see this next set, like this set? Watch them. They're the same way, but see how the shorter blade moves a little bit more? So it's adjusted maybe a little bit better. So your your uh, your obsession, <laughs> your compulsion, would be to adjust this one just a little bit. Yeah, it's touching, but it's not touching as good as that one next to it. We should we should adjust that a little bit and make it a little better. Nope, leave it alone. It's touching. You see it's touching. Leave it alone. Okay, so the third one, when it pulls in, instead of opening, it closes two switches. Right, and see how the smaller one moves a little bit? That's how you want it. So the fourth one, it's open, and then when it pulls in, it closes. And see the smaller blade is moving a little bit. The fifth set is open and closes. The smaller blade is moving. The sixth set is open and closes. Closes. The seventh set is open and closes. So that's what you want. You just want where there is movement. So if you if you shut this relay and nothing happens, something screwed up. <laughs> or if it's closed and you shut the relay and it stays closed. That switch isn't adjusted right. It should be open and close, or it should be close and open. Once you wrap your mind around that, these are so easy to fix. Knock on wood. Watch this one be a nightmare now. Okay, um, sometimes you run into stuff like this. See this one, the paper is actually bent up under it. That could potentially get stuck between the switches where they wouldn't work. And look at these. So there are two sets of switches on this, but they have three blades. So you've got the long one in the middle, and so right now it's touching this one on the outside. And then when the relay pulls in, it breaks from that one and touches the one on the other side. And the same thing's going on here. That's called a make or break, make and break switch. So it it makes the left one while it breaks the right one. And you get the same thing going on. This one here, it's just barely touching, but it does appear to be touching to me. You kind of want to check it after you clean it, because sometimes when you clean it, you bend the switches a little bit. So, But that's what we're going to do. So we're just going to go through and we're going to clean every little thing and uh, try to get all of the switches where they look like they're doing their thing and that they're clean. This particular relay here has a, the connector has been crimped on the end of it. Um, and I don't know why. I don't know why they did that. Also, the piece of paper under it that tells you which coil that is, is gone. So I'm not sure about that. But we're going to solder that wire back on there, get that nice and clean. Um, and that's that. So we'll work. Let me clean all these relays. I'll get all of those clean and adjusted. And then we'll, uh, we'll look at some of our other goodies here. All right, I went through, I cleaned every one of those, didn't run into any surprises other than this one wire that needs resoldered that we talked about. On to the score motor. So this is what makes the entire thing work. So all of these relays can be turned on or off um, by switches on the play field or the start button or the flipper button or, you know, whatever. But you kind of need something to animate it all so that uh, things can reset, so that uh, it can count, things like that. So the score motor, basically every time that um, there are several different coils and switches that whenever they pull in, they start the score motor. 
And then depending on where these switches are on the side of the score motor, as this thing turns, it turns on other switches. Like for instance, let's say every time the ball lands in the bonus hole on the play field, it starts the score motor. Well, if you have a switch uh, wired to the, to the bonus unit, if you have it on this cam here that has little bumps on it, if you watch, uh, uh, which one can we see good? This one. Watch as this turns. That's making switches hit over and over and over again. I'm saying it's making a hit. I don't think it is actually hitting. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> okay. Uh, but as it turns, it makes things connect more than once. So that's how you get like a little bit of animation. So like if you need 500 points, you need to turn the wheel five times. Well, there's no way for one switch to make this turn on five times. But a switch can start this, and you can have a wire connected to it. And then as this turns, it hits a switch five times, which can make it score five times. So they need the score motor, and I call it the score motor, but it's not just for scoring. It's basically... The way I think of it is it's just to give animation to the game, to make things that can't just be turned on and off happen. To make things happen in a sequence, to make uh, points, uh, a certain number of points happen. That's how you get, sometimes you'll have where you can score 300 points. Um, this gun smoke thing, you can score 50, 100, 200, 300, or 500. I think that's through the gun smoke unit in the back, but I'm sure the score motor is used for that too. Uh, but I was just seeing... Here is a switch that is not adjusted very well. As this turns, it goes out, and the this switch here and this switch here, it is not actually touching. Those both need to be bent in a little bit. Um, and I went through, and I've said on previous videos that people have told me to tighten up all the switches before you adjust them. And I have said that I hardly ever run into that. Well, guess what? I did run into that on this score motor, so these were not tight, so I had to tighten it back up, and these were not tight, I had to tighten it back up. Literally, just turn a screw. And so the thought behind it is, is that these little spacers um, shrink a little bit over time. Remember, this thing's, hell, I don't know, at least 50 years old. So I'll adjust these couple uh, switches over here that aren't doing their thing properly, and then uh, we're going to move on to this. Uh, relay stack over here. We'll see what's going on with that. So this relay bank has six relays on it mounted vertically and the reason they do them like this is because that way just one trigger like it can get a signal to turn on the coil for just a second and it will drop uh, this stack all the way down and it'll stay like that until everything gets reset. So the game over relay, you know, if this pulls in it trips it and it'll stay like that okay um, now I don't know uh, let's see here so you know we're sitting here in game over the start relay trips which trips the other start relay and then it runs through its thing and whenever it gets ready to kick the ball out and start the game, maybe this whole bar pulls in and resets all of them. So it's no longer trying to start and the game's not over and now we're in gameplay or whatever, you know. And they would wire it up certain ways. But it has this big, huge coil on it. Look at this thing. It's huge. Now it looks like the paper is all dark brown, like it's burning up or something. But it looks to me like it's just fine. It's just... I think that the uh, the paper has just got heat over the years, and it's just a little brown, but there's no problem because the plunger, which is a little has a little bit of surface rust on it, freely moves. I mean, there's no problems, no problems, folks. But we'll see whenever we try to start it if that actually does uh, if that will actually work. But it's the same thing, you know, just more switches to check. You got to be a little careful whenever you do these because you you have to see if they make and break the way they should 
when they're all the way up and all the way down. The way I clean stuff like this is with a needle file. Let's say you got to clean this, the switches on this one. Well, it's hard to get to the contacts. Right? So you've got to very carefully go through like that, like that to get to the contacts. And it just takes a while and you just go slow and you can get to every set of contacts just like normal. Um, but it just takes a little bit of time. Same story though, there was nothing wrong with any of that. Everything looks cool. Um, we also have some plugs here, some more Jones plugs. Someone has mentioned that they're not really called Jones plugs. That's just kind of a generic term for them. It's like calling window cleaner Windex. There was a certain type that was called a Jones plug. If I say Windex, you know exactly what I'm talking about, even if it's not Windex. It's blue liquid you spray on the window. Uh, uh, same thing with this. It's a Jones plug. It's kind of a generic name, even though Jones, Jones plugs were a certain type. Um, but they're just little posts that can go in different connectors. On this particular one, you can see by the dirt that it's been on this side for a long time. And uh, if it's on that side, it's five balls. If it's on this side, it selects it as three balls. We're fixing this for a customer, so it doesn't really matter what I want. I'm putting it back how he had it. So he's going to keep it on five ball. I usually set them on three ball, but we're going to leave it how it was. Special ball adjustment, one, two, and one, three, and five. I don't even know what that is yet, but uh, same story. It's set on one. Uh, we'll see whenever we uh, start messing with the gameplay and reading the rules what that adjustment actually accomplishes. So, down to this stepper unit. Now, on the first video, whenever we were just messing with stuff, we figured out that this thing ain't working right. So basically, it needs to step up real clean each time, which it's not. <laughs> And then it needs to reset all the way back, which it doesn't. Everything gets hung. You got to help it. So it's got it's got problems, folks. Nothing. It's the ball count unit. Nothing is uh, burned up or damaged. This is all just dirt. That's the whole problem. Is just it's greasy and dirty, and it just needs cleaned. So what we're going to do is. Um, we're going to very carefully, with a pair of pliers, loosen this nut, take it off and take this spider off. Now I have reset it by hitting this one and turning it all the way back. You can just as easily do it going all the way the other way or something. But you kind of want to get to where it's in like a home position. And by doing that, a lot of times you don't have to completely disassemble it. So we'll see if we can get away with that. Um, there's no switches that it hits on the back. Sometimes the stepper units have a switch it hits, but nothing like that. It's all done on the face of it here. You could also take this loose from the, the uh, board so you could get it up where you could get to it. I don't think I'll need to because there's just hardly anything to it. So uh, let me take that loose and then we'll, we'll clean it up a little bit. Okay, so I pulled the, the spider off and I laid it over there. Do you see the little red mark on the leg? That's where somebody's pulled it off in the past because there is a little red mark down there too. So they're just trying to remind themselves which way it goes on. If you look carefully, there are only two ways it can go. It could go that way or it could go that way. Usually, you can figure it out by looking at where the wires are mounted and things like that. But we're going to go with that red mark. Okay, so uh, you saw how it wouldn't reset. It was dragging and just wasn't doing this thing right. Correct? So I have taken that off and we are down to just the post and this geared wheel on the back. And you can see that as this pulls in, it pushes on the gear. And that is what turns the shaft. Now watch what happens when I reset it. Reset real easy. Now watch it. what happens if I turn the thing by hand. It resets perfectly. So why won't it reset with the spider on it? It's just all the, the drag. So all of these little feet are dirty. They've got grease all over them. Look at all that. Blech. And they're just dragging on this grease on the on the uh, 
the bake like board so it's just all gummed up it's not actually the gear through it so a lot of times you don't even have to oil that thing or take it loose or anything like that um, I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on it just because it is metal on metal so that's a metal shaft and a metal piece going through it so if you've got metal on metal it could wear so we can put a little bit of oil on it I'm just gonna put a little drop three in one oil in it and I'm not even gonna take it all the way apart you can just very carefully finagle it a little bit, get a little oil in it, and you'll see whenever you mess with yours. So we're going to do that, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the board with some very light sandpaper, just to shine it up. And uh, we're just trying to get rid of all this, this gummy crap, all of this grease, and we're going to put new grease on it. So it uh, it's turned smoothly, and everything's clean and doing its thing. Now you may be tempted to mess with the springs, make them shorter, make it stronger, and all that. Don't do that. <laughs> You'll regret it later. Don't do it. If the thing's clean, it ought to turn smoothly. Another thing that uh, I took off this piece here is what goes on first. It's just a spacing washer, and it's really dirty. So this is all grease. Same thing. It, it can actually stick to something and make it where it won't smooth smoothly just because of all the grease and you can feel it's kind of tacky so we're going to clean all that up and uh, we'll get it all back together and see if she's turned smoothly again so that's with it all cleaned up and uh, got it cleaned up and there's just a real light coat see the light reflecting off of it there's a real light coat of grease on there we use we showed this stuff a million times synthetic grease because it's dielectric works good for electrical stuff um, you can get this stuff on our website by the way you can get it all over the place but if you go to our website lionsarcade.com we have a a, a, a web a, a page on there a parts page where we've got stuff like this links to it on Amazon if you buy it by going to our link it gives us a little tip so thank you to everybody that's been doing that we also have like t-shirts and stuff like that on there that we sell with our logo on it so if you want to support the channel that's a way that you can but uh, so we cleaned all that off we put that uh, uh, dielectric grease on there got it where it, it is uh, uh, it certainly looks good now let's see if it works so here's a little trick tip whenever you mess with these now notice I did not mess with the springs I didn't even touch them really um, because when we took this off you saw that it was moving fine the springs weren't a problem you saw it was stepping up fine it's just you need to get this where there's very little drag on it so the grease helps with that getting it all clean helps with that cleaning the washer and stuff in, inside of there where it, it's metal on metal all that helps with that but keep in mind that if the washer is always touching this it's not really moving they're just touching each other so you know it just depends on where the piece is Okay, so if you look, see this little leg? It's on the first little little spot, just how it happens to work. And then I can go up and it goes to the second one. Now, when this thing pulls in, it doesn't do it real slow like that. So when you're playing the game, it doesn't go, it doesn't go, doop, dee, doop, doo, doop, doop. It doesn't do that. It's very violent. It's like, nah. <laughs> does it real fast okay so whenever you're checking it you want to check it by going fast okay so and then another thing it reset all the way but if you look the way it resets is this clock spring right so my point is it's easier to reset it from a farther distance because the spring is tighter but what you want to do is see if it'll reset from short distances so what do I mean by that well this is the ball count unit what happens if you go to ball one and then you turn the game off well you need to be sure that even though that clock spring was just barely moved that it, it's able to reset from ball one back to the original spot so let's see and it did so what about ball two and a third position so no matter where we are, it'll reset, and it's actually easier to reset.
from the farther position because you turn the spring more. All right, so that thing's good to go. So we've got the the all of the relays clean. The switch is clean. You got the score motor clean. Every everything cleaned. I adjusted those ones that didn't look like they were touching. Everything now looks like it's touching. Uh, we got this ball count unit working good. This relay bank, everything seems cool and clean. Uh, let's go get the soldering iron and we'll fix this wire. Uh, and then we need to mess with uh, the Jones plugs just a little bit. Okay, so I resoldered the wire on the connector. And that leaves us with, uh, in keeping with the theme of cleaning everywhere metal touches and, and uh, stuff turns on and off and everything, we have these Jones plugs, the big ones. So it's the same thing as what we saw earlier. Basically these posts are filthy. So if we get these nice and shiny again, they will conduct electricity better when they're put in the female end of the plugs over there. And uh, you can clean the female end with like a little a bore brush. I have been advised that I can say bore brush on YouTube and they will not delete my video. <laughs> but if I was to tell you what the brush is used for, they may delete my video. So you want to use a bore brush to clean out <laughs> the female sides and then I just use sandpaper to clean these. Get them all shiny, scuffed up and looking good. People have asked if you could use a chemical. You probably could. Most of this stuff, I don't know about these, but most of the contacts is actually silver. So you, you, you're you cleaning silver. That's why they look so tarnished and stuff. Okay, so uh, I'm going to clean these up. We've got these two here that, get, that plug into that front plug. And then over here, we had one that plugged into back where the, uh, the uh, chimes are. Not the chimes, the bells. So there's a big bell on the right. Let's play them. Are you ready? And you're going to be inside the cabinet, so it's going to be loud. So watch your ears. If I could do it. I might not be able to do it. <laughs> I can't do it by hand. But basically, the coil pulls in, it pulls the plunger up, and it hits the side of the, the, the bell which I can simulate with my screwdriver. There you go. And then the third one over there is the knocker for when you win a free game. It just slaps a bar and makes a big clunk sound. Um, so we got to clean up that Jones plug and these two Jones plugs, and then we're ready to set this thing back down in there. Bore brush. So I clean the, out the sockets, put them back in, put the board back down. Now you might say, oh man, it still looks dirty. Well, all the dirt is gone, and the dust is gone, but yeah, it hasn't. you can't really clean it up without taking all that stuff off. But I can assure you, the switches are clean. I made sure of it. Now we may still find some that are messed up, but we'll, we'll, we'll track that all down with the schematics um, whenever we figure out what's working and what isn't working. So, as we stand right now, we have finished everything in the bottom of it. Tilt Bob was was uh, tilted. Uh, we have finished everything in the bottom of it, so I, well, except for the fuses, I guess. So uh, this entire transformer panel, everything on it, we've worked through. We know all of that stuff is as close to working as we can get it by just eyeballing it. And we uh, we have the Jones plugs that are down there, all set up. Everything's cool. So from there. Everything runs up to the head. Now, you may have noticed on the earlier video, none of the lights were working in the head. Uh, we did get it to score a couple times, earlier in the video, I mean. We did get the gun smoke thing to try to start doing its thing. So it's it's limping along, folks. It's trying to do its thing, but we don't have the play field in it now, so we can't even try that anymore. But, but uh, this is a good little start. If you get one, this is what you want to do first. By the way, this isn't just for... Uh, Chicago coin gunsmoke machines. 
If you get a Chicago coin, it'll be very similar to this. If you get a Bally or a Williams, it'll be fairly similar to this, but not exactly. If you look really close, right here, see that cut wire? Those are just extra wires in the in the um, wiring harness because they had different. They they would use some of the same wiring on different games, etc., 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 etc. So this is just kind of uh, they're all very similar for a while, you know. So if uh, if Chicago Coin made it for a year or two, it was probably wired very similarly. But you just use the same techniques on any of them. So if you've got an old one that you want to um, try to fix up, this is how you do it. You just kind of have to do it systematically, work through every little thing, and eventually you will have it working just great. And if you don't believe me, all you got to do is just wait till the end of this video series, and you'll see this one working great. So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think so far. Next time we'll work in the back, in the back box. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. And uh, thanks again to everybody that's been using our Amazon links. We appreciate that. There's some down just to the main page of Amazon down below if you'd like. And make sure to check out our brother channel, My Brother Donnie. My Brother Donnie is literally my brother. And uh, he and I have bought a couple buildings in a small town near here in the downtown area that we are trying to fix up to help revitalize town. So if you like watching us work on old pinball machines, you may enjoy watching us work on old buildings. So make sure to check that out. We just did a video uh, recently where we found a wallet in the roof of one of the buildings whenever we cleaned up and uh, returned it to the original owner after 44 years. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, we found his wallet, though. <laughs> so uh, uh, make sure to check that out if you haven't already, and uh, we will see you on the next video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Next time we'll go through the head and get it where we can get it to light back up again.